Today we have Richard II in a Shakespeare in play. Hello fellow plot quizzers, it is I on the plot quizzer and today we got Richard II by William Shakespeare himself and well, let's get right on to it. So, today I will be doing a, not a really a plot review, but rather a kind of character analysis for one of the characters. And I want to focus on some things he did in the first three acts, and I want to talk about how, what, uh, my theories on what he does and how he, why, why he's doing it. So, let's get right into it. This is an analysis of Henry Bolingbroke. Now, Henry Bolingbroke is this guy who gets exiled by Richard II, who eventually creates the rebellion. And basically, I want to make up a couple of theories on what he did and why he got exiled, why he came back to create a rebellion, and what his ulterior motives may have been. My first theory is that it was all part of the master plan. This is like the Palpatine level background planning. Or, or the father from Fullmetal Alchemist or something. Because this is a crazy theory if this guy is like a literal genius. What if he got exiled on purpose? What if he was exiled on purpose because he wanted Richard to not see him as an enemy or a rival so that Richard wouldn't even think about it? What if he knew that his dad would die soon and the crisis is Ireland? What if he knew that Richard II, knowing his personality, would take his dad's money once his dad died? What if he knew that these, a perfect excuse would be created to create a rebellion where he could become king? I think, I think really this could be something if like the author really meant it, like Shakespeare really meant it, because there is a scene within the play where uh, Richard is talking to his like flatterers and his friends, and he's talking about how much he doesn't like Bolingbroke, and everyone else is like, "Hey, it's okay, it's okay. You don't need to care about him. He's gone for six years anyway." So maybe that was that was just Shakespeare telling us this is exactly what Bolingbroke wants us to do because this is all his plan, and this is all from the startup plan, so that Richard would not think about him, so he'd come back, make his return, and go for a rebellion. And evidence for this is uh, when he meets Richard, because when he's talking to Richard, he, he talks in a manner, in a very rather almost manipulative, sly manner to Richard. He says like, oh, hey, hey, I'm back. I just want my exile rebuked. And I just want my title and my house and my money back. That is all I want. I don't want to be king. But from the tones and the way that he's speaking, you can tell he's kind of going, Hey, you. You may be king, but you don't really have anything right now, do you? I got the entirety of England behind me. The commoners, the nobles, they all behind me right now. Who's the real king here? And that's the vibe we're getting, but the words they're saying are, Oh, I'm your noble um, um, knight and lord and whatever. So maybe it was all part of the master plan. And another evidence for this could be a scene where the lord of York is angry at one of the rebels by, because he only joined the rebels because he thought that um, our dear Helen Bolingbroke had suffered a rightful wrong and his rage was rightful, and also Richard's kind of a terrible king. And this also could be another effect that Bolingbroke had decided, and maybe Shakespeare's kind of mentioning that just to show how, how well Bolingbroke's plan worked. And also in that scene, we can see that Bolingbroke kind of agrees with the, with, the other, with the guy who got yelled at by York, kind of not calling Richard King Richard, but instead just calling him Richard. And that just shows that he really doesn't like him, and for how long, is the real question. The second theory is rightful anger. This is the more one-dimensional thing that it's just exactly as it seems. He got exiled for really not a really great reason, then he came back, found out that his dad was dead, his title was taken, everything that he owned was taken by the king to wage a war. And this king is a terrible person. So you kind of want to go for revenge thing and everyone kind of likes you. So you go for it. And maybe on the way you realize, hey, I got every single noble and every single commoner in England behind me. I could probably become the king. And that's when he started to think about that. 
And those are my two theories. And now here, I would like to introduce a debate of what is a king? This reminds me of a dialogue in uh, in a, in a in Fate Zero, which is a great anime. I'm I don't know why, but um, basically what I'm trying to say is, is a king a title? It is a is it a birthright? Is it a family name? Is it a job? Is it a person who simply has a lot of followers? What is a king supposed to do? And um, here it's like, you know, is, is a king a, a shield for his or her country? Is a king someone who laughs the loudest, drinks the loudest, and grasps the heart of the citizens? What is a king? Or is a king simply a person who owns every single thing and may do what he wishes? And everything that a king does is kingly and everything they say is law. What is a king? And I think that really comes into question when Bolingbroke goes up to King Richard and says, Hey, you're King Richard. You're saying, hey, this is my birthright, so I am king. That's what you're saying. But, hey, yeah, so I'm not going to try to be king. Because what is king but a title, right? Because right now, I got, like, I, like, I, like I've mentioned a lot of times, I got my followers, all of the commoners love me like a good king should, and all the nobles love me as well, like a good king should. And you, everyone hates you, the commoners and the nobles both. And you're just standing on the top of your little tower saying, hey, I'm the king by God's right. That's all you're saying, that's that entire argument you have. I deserve to be king, and I want to be king, is the vibe that we're getting, because he's the way that he's saying I don't want to be king almost makes it seem like he's really challenging Richard here and saying you can see I have the authority of a king right now and you don't have that authority and I'm not gonna ask you for your crown back because I don't care about it I already I already am king literally because I have the entirety of the country following me not you a king is just a title and that's that's kind of maybe maybe the maybe the impact that he wanted to create in that scene. But there is an eternal debate about about what makes a good king and what is a king. Is yeah, and I think it's a very interesting debate and we just discussed a little bit about that. So, to summarize, we had a character analysis of Henry Bolingbroke and if he's like a genius like freaking like freaking like light death no level of super duper smart and he planned every single thing meticulously even his self-image so that later on he could take over and kick king richard off his throne or is he just as it seems as as the play seems to present him as a, some sort of wounded r hero who got everything taken from him and came back to for his revenge and accidentally got handed the title of king who knows <laughs> <coughs> who knows it could be both and i'll leave that choice up to you guys so far actually i'm kind of enjoying the play it's not half as bad as all the other shakespeare and plays and it's 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 I've I've enjoyed a little bit of it and the symbolism parts and the stuff that I kind of enjoy and I really liked some of the parts so far and I've only read till act number act three but I'll do a full review on the book when I finish it. Have a great day, everybody, and like always, your plot quester Aaron the plot quester. Who is Henry Bolingbroke? A fallen hero who lost everything going for revenge? Or is he a maniacal schemer, smarter and more devious than any of us can imagine? We'll find out.